This is a gearbox um, from an R33 Skylines. It was an RB25 gearbox. Um, for those of you that aren't familiar with Nissan uh, manual gearboxes from the 90s, uh, this is a larger casing, larger internal box um, than came factory fitted in my R32, so this is this is the later model. It can hold a bit more power, which is why I've got hold of one. Um, that and my Synchro is going on third. The prices of these boxes now are getting, getting quite expensive, um, so a, a good used condition gearbox now probably goes for £1,500, um, unknown mileage, unverified just known to be working. Um, I purchased this one knowing that it is not working and it is definitely broken. Um, so it, it should have lost third gear and you can hear things uh, rolling around inside the gearbox. Um, so it's definitely lost something. Um, it sounds like it's probably taken some bearings out with it. Uh, let's hope we get lucky uh, and there's not uh, a lot of damage. So we did take a gamble on this one and hopefully it will pay off uh, for us. So we'll start stripping this down now, try and assess the damage and what we need and we'll go from there. So this, this is my first time taking this gearbox apart. I have taken the smaller casing one that's in my uh, vehicle apart before um, but that was a while ago so You'll have to uh, have to bear with me on some parts. So here we go. So just to add, um, I can tell from the sealant and from some of the bolts that this definitely has been apart before, um, which probably is not a great sign, but let's see what we find. So on this side there is a ball bearing and we'll try not to lose that. We'll get it out now so we don't lose it later. So there's the ball bearing for the detent. So there's a small assembly here. I guess this is a uh, A neutral uh, lockout, ah, uh, sorry, a reverse lockout. So we'll uh, take this out to stop it from uh, getting in the way. So that's the mechanism there, and it has an O ring uh, which we'll need to replace, but it's looking pretty crispy anyway. So Probably a good idea that that's gone. Now with the RB20 transmission you need to knock this uh, pin out of the selector before you can pull this uh, casing apart because this portion of the casing here should lift off um, leaving the gear set and the bell housing so we need to take the pin out of, uh, out of this. This is the roll pin that you need to punch out. I don't have the right size punch, um, so I've just used a spare rivet, which fits nicely uh, in that pin and pushes it out. This is a 4mm rivet, if anyone was uh, wondering. 
Uh, but if you've got the right tools, that's good. I don't. So the selector uses two roll pins holding it onto the selector shaft. They sit concentrically inside each other like that, obviously pressed all the way in. And to punch this one out, you first need to punch this one out. So you use a four millimeter rivet to punch this one out and then an M5 bolt um, to push this one out. So now both of these are out. Theoretically, we can remove this selector. On this RB25 transmission, there's actually a uh, selector plate or something like a shift gate uh, inside the shifter mechanism. Uh, which the RB20 transmission doesn't have, which is quite interesting. So we'll take that out at the same time as this, and then we can have a look. And this is held in with two 10mm uh, headed M6 bolts, I imagine. Yeah. Interesting bolt. It's got a little collar on the top of it, but uh, might not even be M6, might be even smaller. Interesting that I can't get this 3 8 in here uh, at the same time you need to be able to lift you have to lift this linkage up to get a socket in here Second bolt, same as the first one, which is always a good sign. And unfortunately, we still can't take this out, which means we have to split this casing, uh, which will remove this rod. But it does mean that we can now get this casing off uh, without anything holding us up. So holding this casing together, they're all 14mm uh, headed bolts, which normally means uh, M10, I think, or M8. We'll find out if I can undo them. Okay, so we've loosened those all off. No problem. Something we will actually try and do, I'll try and take these sensors out so they don't catch on anything uh, on the way out, so that is something to be, uh, be wary of. So these sensors look like 19s. Okay, so that's just a uh, Position sensor. We'll have to remember that the green one goes uh, at the top. And then, <clears throat> ideally, you'd like to get a socket on here, but uh, I can't, so I'm going to try and uh, try and use a crow's foot, which is perfect. It's just loosening that off enough. If not, quite. This one's actually quite sticky. Um, position switch. <laughs> All of the bolts are the same size. So you don't need to worry about them going back in uh, specific places. Theoretically, we should be able to pull this uh, this side off now. 
So now we can take our little uh, gated uh, gated shifter out. <clears throat> and uh, we'll prepare for whatever carnage is in here. Okay, so there's the inside of the uh, back half of the casing. So knowing that everything is okay here, <clears throat> unfortunately suggests like we might have some problems um, in the back, back half because we don't have any problems here. We definitely have some issues <clears throat> in this section here. I believe third is at the end of that shaft, so that makes sense. Um, so we'll, we'll pull a couple of more ports out. We'll pull that off because I'm not sure what's behind there and we'll, we'll keep going through. So it looks like another detent in here. Which we've lost the ball bearing for. <clears throat> Should have tipped that out, but we'll have to get that in a second. I hope this should come out as one piece, but we will see. <laughs> one drain plug with what I suspect is third gear, and let's hope that it's only third gear. We'll try and keep some of the fluid off the floor. We should probably take the front plate out as well. I'll just put third gear back in. You can see the input plate there, we'll take that off as well. They should all be um, 12s. This is the front plate. I think normally they do have gaskets on them, uh, but this one doesn't. It's just been RTV'd badly. <laughs> so it looks like in this side we have a circlip around uh, around the large bearing and another small circlip um, around that one. So we'll try and ping those off. So the top one is the selector fork. So there's that small circlip, which holds on this washer. I'm sure there's a proper tool to do that, but I don't know what it is, and I don't have it. So. Can't see a circle up on that one, um, so we'll try and take it apart as is. So now I'll pick this moment to uh, puke out gearbox oil on the floor.
the guy bought this off told me he drained the gearbox oil in my defense um but his version of i've drained the gearbox oil is quite clearly not my version of, of that but hey ho it's all cleaned up now i'm sure we'll, we'll make more of a mess in a minute uh, but let's try and try and split these casings apart So here's the ball we were looking for earlier. Right, let me take you in. Here it is. Here is third gear. Sorry, here was third gear. Ouch. So yeah, third gear definitely gone, but it's okay, because I found third gear, it's here. Some assembly required perhaps, but it's there. You can see remnants of uh, gear everywhere. But yeah, it's pretty, uh, pretty impressive. Yeah, looks like we need a new, uh, new third gear and uh, third gear idler, and uh, everything else needs a clean. Right, now we know what we need to order. I'll uh, see you all in the next part. <laughs>